good this morning to see so many of our regular congregation and other well-wishers and friends joining with us for our harvest celebration. An unfair question, there may be just two people here that will be able to tell us what happened in Derbyshire on October the 3rd. Well the Brailsford Ploughing Society met at Osmerston and David Judith, they were in traditional dress. Beautiful photograph in this month's Derbyshire life. The reason I mention that is later, have a look at the photograph here of the Derbyshire writer Crichton Porteous. He wrote 30 books between 1938 and 1960, and his first book was Farmer's Creed, which is autobiographical, and the second one is also autobiographical graphical entitled Teamsman and at the age of 11 he went off to be a farmer because he wanted to be a Teamsman and there's a photo of him there with his favourite horse Rosie in 1923. It's a long while ago. It's our custom as with many congregations in the United Kingdom and throughout the world to light the chalice which is the symbol of the Unitarian movement and perhaps while I do this we'll have a moment of quiet and then we're going to hear some beautiful words from Walt Whitman. The earth never tires. The earth is rude, silent, incomprehensible at first. Nature is rude and incomprehensible at first. Be not discouraged. Keep on. There are divine things well enveloped. I swear to you, there are divine things more beautiful than words can tell. So then shall we sing together, and our first hymn is 271, 271. <laughs> First reading this morning is a few brief words from the rabbinic tradition 
It's taken from the Torah, which is uh, one of the first five books of the Old Testament. And these are very special words to our friends in the Hebrew communities. Uh, they are certainly words that Jesus would have been uh, aware of and would have heard on many occasions in his church. And of course, his church was the synagogue. Jesus of Nazareth lived and died a Jew. And now I have brought the first fruits of the soil, which thou, O Lord, hast given me. You shall then set the basket before the Lord. You shall all rejoice, you and the Levites and the immigrants living among you, for all the good things which the Lord your God has given to you and to your family. I'm going to invite now uh, Heidi, George and Bertie to present to us their baskets, which is a way of us all together saying thank you for everything each of us have brought. And it conveys something uh, of the uh, spirit of that particular reading. So... And we do thank you as a family for giving of your best this morning. So we've got lots of good things. So you've brought plenty of change and uh, notes with you this morning. Something of Harvest is about looking, isn't it? We're, we're looking at these beautiful displays. I know there are people in this congregation that enjoy getting up to Chatsworth. I was there on Wednesday and the trees at the moment are absolutely magnificent. And we're so fortunate, aren't we, living in the Derwent Valley, uh, the beauty of the colour and the variety of the trees are absolutely magnificent. Our next reading captures this business of just simply looking, because very often in the busyness and the rush of life, we simply fail, don't we, to do that. So, Heidi... What is this life, if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight, streams full of stars like stars at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. A poor life this if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare. I think that explains the next um, hymn that we're going to share together. It's 275 and we'll stand and sing this hymn together.
It's harvest festival time again. But do you know that the festival as we celebrate it today was invented as recently as the mid-1840s? Although part of the church calendar since medieval times, it had gradually been forgotten until Robert Stephen Hawker, the vicar of Morwenstow in Cornwall, decided to change things. To call Rev Hawker an eccentric would almost be an understatement, for his behaviour was as colourful as his very non-clerical clothes. He talked to birds, excommunicated his cat for mousing on Sundays, and kept a large pig as a pet. He was, however, also greatly loved by the parishioners, so when on 1st of October 1843, he invited them to a new kind of harvest festival. They were happy to approve his efforts, which had included decking the church from top to toe with vegetables, flowers, fruit and bread. Indeed, so popular was Rev Hawker's version of Harvest Festival that it soon became accepted everywhere. Today, it remains one of our favourite festivals and this time, when we join in the praise, let us give thanks, not just for the harvest, but for the work of Robert Stephen Hawker, whose joy of living enriched so many lives. I'm indebted to my wife, Ruth, who kindly introduced me to the next reading, which in a way is the sort of reading that they would have been listening to in the Victorian period. So, Melody. <laughs> harvest Thanksgiving. Time now for the harvest, the gifts of fruit and grain, for all the blessings, great and small, bestowed by sun and rain. And time to think of other gifts, so many we receive, for love and hope and thoughtfulness, and all we can achieve. A time to think of other lands and send a healing prayer to reach out far across the earth and show the world we care. And close to home, a thankful prayer for comfort, warmth and rest, for help and guidance day by day, for we are truly blessed. And now we raise our songs of praise in music, words and rhyme, for all the bounty of the year, give thanks at harvest time. I've heard it on more than one occasion that Unitarians are singing Quakers, so I'm pleased you're all in good voice because we're going to have now the Belper Harvest Anthem of the Chapel, so Matt. We're going to do This Land is Your Land, which is number 255 in the Green Hymn Book. There is a slight deviation in that between verses 3 and 4 and verses 5 and 6, there's an instrumental break. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to break our instruments, although you might want <laughs> us to. But so whatever you do, don't go straight into the verse after that. Feel free to whistle, clap. Hum, la di da, stamp your feet, make cowboy noises, but don't sing the next verse. So a, that's the break is between three and four, five and six. If you're totally, if you're singing different to everybody else, you know that you're the one that's got it wrong. So we'll just see how it goes. This land is your land.
must be absolutely awful on a day like this to be homeless uh, and to be just wherever you can find somewhere to shelter. It's been our privilege this year to uh, try and support the Padley Homeless Charity in Derby and it's something that we're going to continue for a further year because we really feel that perhaps what we've raised this year isn't a lot of money and we don't want to play at it, we want to actually try and raise some proper funding for that charity which as we all know is only what 20 minutes at the most down the road. So I'm going to invite uh, the representative, Kerry please, to whatever you wish to relate to us. Good morning everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for choosing to support Padley uh, this Harvest Festival and as David has kindly told me uh, that it will continue for the next coming year. Um, the harvest and support of all the churches in Derbyshire is a very, very big deal to Padley. We wouldn't be able to continue without the support and certainly when we lost all of our funding six years ago, it was the strength of the general public and the churches uh, and the support they gave us that, that kept us going. Um, without the harvest as well, uh, we wouldn't continue to be able to run. It uh, is worth nearly £30,000 to us. Um, so without it, we, we couldn't continue. So thank you ever so much, uh, and thank you for your continued support. Um, the Padley Charity was actually founded in 1985 by the Sisters of Mercy and the Fellowship of Churches in Derby. So the church is extremely important to Padley, and we would not be here without it. Um, I'll give you a quick brief overview of what we do. So on Beckett Street uh, in Derby City Centre, we have a homeless centre. Upstairs, there are 12 bedrooms where single men can stay and basically go into rehabilitation with us before we then try and move them on into a sustainable tenancy. Downstairs um, is a drop-in centre where anyone can come in and get food, um, clothing, shower, basically anything that me and you take for granted that we can do in our homes. So we do try to support the homeless um, as much as we can. The uh, homeless situation in Derby is unfortunately increasing. It is not waning. So the more support we can get from everyone is, is so very, very important. Um, again, thank you so much for the auction today, your continued support and inviting me as well. Thank you very much. Well, this has become a bit of a favourite of the Ukulele Club and certain members of the congregation specifically requested this one. So, we have been practising it, but if you sing loud, it means it covers up the bits that we don't know yet. So... <laughs>
For those of you that like sermons, the sermon is the next hymn. It's 274, and if you take nothing else away with you from this service, ponder during the week these words from John Andrew's story. Um, and if you can't find anything there, well, um, I'm sorry, but... So, we're going to sing together 274 as we celebrate the harvest, food provided for our need. 274. festival to a conclusion we're going to just have a moment's quiet I'm going to invite Frances please to come forward and after the quiet she will lead us in our moments of prayer or just simple reflection whatever is your own practice so Frances My prayer from the checkout queue at Morrison's. As I stand and wait, may I have patience. May I be understanding of those around me. May I be kind with the people serving me. If I see someone needing help, may I be quick to offer it. And as I look around at the stacked shelves, may I take the time to be thankful. Thankful that I have a choice of food and the money to pay for that food. Thankful that I have a home, family, friends and a community to share it with. And within that community, I have the freedom to come to this chapel and in a few moments of quiet I can without fear be truly thankful. Amen. In the moments of quiet I don't know who you were perhaps uh, thinking of but I just want to mention this morning, very close to our hearts, is our good friend Mary Smedley. Uh, and we owe such a lot to Mary, who over the years has worked very hard to enable this uh, chapel to be in the condition that it's in. 
and after the service I will be taking some flowers to Mary who is a trustee of the chapel. So then, before we uh, get the auction going, let's finish with 270, because John Arlott was a journalist, he uh, was employed by the Guardian, uh, a poet, and he wrote uh, this beautiful hymn as well as being a good cricket commentator. So we'll close with God whose farm is all creation. <laughs> To a busy, stressful world we turn our steps. May we each carry with us the peace of this place, the purity of our thoughts here, the sense of fellowship we found, and the simple desire to do justly, to love mercy, and to live humbly with our God, now and always. Amen. Oh, before we start, by the way, I would like you to know that we take sustainability and environmental issues very seriously at this chapel, so any jokes you hear from now on are guaranteed 100% recycled, <laughs> from last year and probably the year before as well, actually. So, let's start, shall we? I think we'll start with, look at this, ready-to-go ploughmans with Cornish yarg. look at that, your little oat cakes, figs. Tomatoes, red onion marmalade. Come on, who's going to start me on this one? A pound? Do I hear more? I've got to hear more than a pound. Two pound? Two? Three pound. I heard three. Three. Three going once at five. Five going once at five. Any more than five? Do I hear any more than five? Five once, five twice. Five pounds. Enjoy your ploughmans, madam. A lovely, locally grown, grown on Mount Pleasant, Belper, a lovely, big, firm cabbage. Look at that. Absolute, absolute beauty. Who's going to start me at two pounds? Two pounds for the cabbage. Two pounds for this lovely, heavy local cabbage. You'll need a trolley to take it home. It's that heavy. Come on, two pounds. Any more than two pounds? Once, twice. Two pounds. It's sold. There we go. Thank you, Sophie. Now, yeah. marrow and ginger jam. Homemade, good stuff this, excellent. Marrow and ginger jam, who's going to start me to pound? Pound? Two pounds, two pounds from the gentleman, the very well-dressed gentleman near the front there. Thank you, two pounds, two pounds once, two pounds, there is more jammies available. So two pounds, Rowan, two pounds, thank you very much. Now. One thing I love, I really love about Harvest more than anything, 
Some people know what's coming already, don't they? One thing I love about Harvest is to see this wonderful, fabulous array of local produce. <laughs> so who's going to start me at, what, 50p on a pineapple? 50p? 50p? A pound? We've got a pound for this lovely local pineapple here. Pound? Pound once? Pound twice? <laughs> 